Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. This is the day of the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice at the reading from the prophet Isaiah as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Señor, amparo, Señor. 
Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Hola. Buenos dias. Good morning. Uh, my name, as many of you know, my name is Alfredo Feregrino. Um, I'm a, right now, I'm an associate rector at uh, All Saints Episcopal Church in Pasadena. Uh, and I'm so happy to be with all of you here. And um, I'm really happy and grateful that Kevin invited me to preach for this Sunday. It's really nice to be back in this beautiful space. Thank you so much. So my first experience that I can remember regarding seeds and their germination was in kindergarten. The experiment was to learn about seed germination and notice how a tiny seed, a tiny seed, in this case, a pinto bean, develops and sprouts, grows from the soil, becoming something totally different from its original form. Germination, I learned, in kindergarten, is the process by which a plant grows from a seed, a process of complete transformation. So, as I was reviewing the instructions on how to do this planting experiment again for this sermon, I notice 
that the instructions were very clear. First of all, you need a fresh seed. You need good quality soil, loose and ventilated. You need water and light. Simple, right? Pretty simple. What drew my attention in reading these simple instructions is that in order for you, in order for you to, for your seed to grow successfully, you need good quality soil. Good quality soil. Interesting, right? I had to admit that I didn't know the fact. Good quality soil. I thought that putting the seed in the ground and putting water on it is all you need. I was grown, I guess. We need good quality soil as well to succeed. In the gospel that we hear today, commonly known as the parable of the sower, or perhaps even better, the parable of the seed and the soils, Jesus uses the familiar and well-known agricultural wisdom of his time. In this case, the example of the quality of different kinds of soils as a living image to emphasize the different kinds of obstacles and challenges encountered and confronted by the proclamation of God's kingdom, as Jesus explained in this parable. So to understand the meaning of this parable, let me explain the context in which it was written. The Gospel of Matthew was written around the year 80 of our common era, 10 years after the Roman Jewish War. It was one of the most turbulent times in the history of the Jewish nation and ended with the destruction of the temple, the city, and the nation. Matthew, the Gospel writer, live at a time when tribulation and persecution began on account of the spread of the word of God by early Christians in the Roman Empire. So many Christians at that time were immersed in the worries of their lives, the cares of the world, and by the worldly traps of wealth and deceit as the gospel tells us. No much different, perhaps, of what is happening to us with, within our current context, right? In this time, in our time. So, with this scenario, for those new Christian communities, the prospects of the kingdom of God that Jesus proclaimed look rather unclear. It must have felt like the kingdom of God, a kingdom of justice, peace, and love, was so distant and far away in the lives of these new Christian communities, right? A kingdom where in accordance with Jesus' promises, the poor, the hungry, and those who were oppressed will finally come into their own, where pain and suffering will have an end. The signs of the kingdom for those new Christian communities were unclear or felt so distant. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Can you identify where the signs of God's kingdom are present in our own time? And 
What's more? Where can we make those signs present and available? I wonder. The parable that we just heard today speaks of a sower. Of a sower. A sower that doesn't know, doesn't know in advance what is beneath the soil surface. He doesn't know whether the ground is hard, where the soil is shallow, or where the weeds will choke. But what is so remarkable here is that in each seed that the sewer throws, the sewer sees possibilities. The sewer sees potentials and promises. The sower throws each seed in the hope that something will bear fruit. And this is what God is doing in our lives. This is what God is doing in our lives. This is the good news that this gospel proclaims. Those tiny little seeds are God's words. Words as simple as love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbors as yourself. Or words as simple as do justice, love kindness, and work humble with your God. All those words, words of truth, hope, and love, continue proclaiming God's kingdom to enter in our lives and germinate and produce fruit in abundance. So I wonder, I wonder, do we allow those words, the Word of God, the Word that continues proclaiming God's kingdom, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace, to enter in our lives and germinate and produce fruit in abundance? Can we recognize the precious little seed that has the potential to produce fruit in abundance in our world? in our communities and our families? But what does these little seeds that produces an amazing harvest looks like, we may ask? I will say that those little seeds also had the possibility to become great hopes. Those little seeds, if we hold them kindly in our hearts, can develop, as in the kindergarten experiment, into something totally different from its original form. Those little seeds can develop into a great moment of peace, carrying the promise of a new experience of friendship and love. Those little seeds can also be moments of, moments of grace. Seeds of love that God is planting in our lives. And they can still be there asleep inside of us, waiting for the right time, waiting for the right soul to flourish. So, the question that we may ask today is what does it mean to become like good soil? What would we need to do for the seed to be able to take root in our hearts and souls? There is a story that my mother told me one time. She said that once upon a time, there was a boy, a boy who always wanted to play with his dad, with his father. So one day the child asked his father, Dad, can we play? But the father never had time and answered him, You know what? I don't have time now. I have a lot of work to do, and I have to finish this task. 
Another day, the child asks, Dad, can you take me to the park or can you take me to the store? And the father replied, I'm sorry, son, I cannot take you now. I'm very tired. Let's do it another day. And so the days passed and the father never had time for his son. The years passed and the son went to college. When the son came back to visit his home, the father asked his son, Hey son, take a seat for a moment and tell me about your life at the college. And the son answered, You know that? I cannot tell you now. I have many commitments and I had to see my friends. Let's do it another day. When the father retired and lived in another place, he called his child by phone and asked him, Son, son, I want to see you. Could you come to visit me? I need your help and I need to move some boxes. My body is tired, tired, and I cannot do it alone. And the son responded, You know that? Right now I can. Because I have to take care of my children and I have a lot of work. Let's do it another day. Does this tale sound familiar? Does this tale sound familiar to you? It is clear that in this tale, in this story, that the seeds that the child sowed and planted in his father never grew because the father did not have good quality soil to offer. The seeds that had the potential to become a great relationship never made it. As in the gospel, this, these little tiny seeds of love and connection fell on rocky and unfertile ground. And we always can apply this same story to any loved one, mother, spouse, or friend. So I wonder again, I wonder, how can we make sure we have a good quality soil and the right conditions to allow the seeds that have been planted in our lives lead us to develop and grow? How can we nourish and cultivate those little tiny seeds that have the potential to become great hopes in new soil and trust in the mysterious process of God in our lives. Probably it's not going to be as simple as the germination experiment that I have in kindergarten. Grow is not automatic. And bearing fruit may not come, may not come easy in all of our lives and all times. But we can start by making the call that we are afraid to make. We can start by forgiving those who wounded us. We can start by spending time with our kids, with our loved ones, by visiting or calling our lonely parents. By giving flowers to our spouses or partners and telling them that we love them. And by being, and by being in solidarity with those who have suffered and continue to suffer injustice. We can, we can become that good quality soil but taking our experiences of God and sharing them with others. We can become that good quality soil by living justly and treating others with dignity. In the end, in the end, we must trust in the seeds that God has planted in us and learn to be this good quality soil. 
and allow the little tiny seed to enter into our hearts and grow. To allow the Word of God to take root in our lives. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us to salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O ancient gardener, your holy word is planted in our hearts as good seed in fertile soil. So nurture us that we may bear fruit abundantly. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to St. Luke Episcopal Church. It's wonderful that you are joining us today. Um, at St. Luke's, we are a congregation that welcomes all. And so I hope you feel uh, that you may participate in uh, the fullest way possible in this liturgy today. On the right hand of your side of your screen, there are a number of options, ways that you can participate more fully by being in touch with the news of our parish goings on, uh, education programs that are ongoing or upcoming. Join us today, if you want, uh, to our coffee hour. If you see where you see Zoom, that is, uh, click there and you will find instructions uh, for, uh, to join us for coffee hour at our Zoom coffee hour. Also, there is a button called Give, and this is a way that we can uh, pass the plate in this time of COVID-19 uh, safely. You can push give and um, give through Venmo or PayPal um, so that you may uh, continue to support St. Luke Church and our ministry that is ongoing and very alive. Welcome to this day and this life together uh, in these unusual and growing times. God bless you.
Lest the word of God return empty to the heavens, let us turn our hearts to the needs of others and plant the seeds of justice, saying, In mercy, hear us. For the Christian churches throughout the world, that together we may harvest compassion in an abundance of mercy, we pray, In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. That leaders of government refuse to worship Mars, the god of war, but rather attend to Christ's call of peace, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. For farmers, harvesters, and migrant workers, and for an end of injustice toward those who work the land, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. That people of the earth may honor and respect the natural resources of the planet, and for an end to the consumerism that encourages ravage, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. For the catechumens in our communities, that fertile in faith, they may be a soil rich in receptivity, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. For the sick, especially infant Oscar, and for all the oppressed, that the reign of God will hold sway in all human life, we pray. In, in mercy, mercy, hear us. us. Blessed and praised are you, O God, for the word of your mouth. In your mercy, listen to all who call to you in faith. Let your word find root in our lives. We pray in the name of your child, Jesus, who lives with you in the power of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks, thanks and, and praise, praise for all, all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Friday.